you know, it's easy to step on the wrong train, so. <laughs> um, now, let's see. Uh, the, the resolution of the screen is, uh, well, my screen is a lot bigger, so. Um, and anyway, I was going to show you um, As you probably know, uh, I've written a book, and um, for this session, there is a spe special discount code. Uh, it will go away. Um, um, it will go away a few days after the conference. But if you uh, if you go on to nostarch.com and go to the book's website, you will get 40% off with the, that code. Uh, I was really hoping to have physical copies with me here, but that was not possible for uh, logistical reasons. Um, so anyway, I'll keep that slide uh, open for a little while. Um, so um, good morning. Welcome to your Uh Welcome to Sofia. Uh, I only arrived here last uh, um, uh, yesterday. Uh, uh, afternoon myself, so I was a little, uh, I was disoriented enough that I got on the wrong train coming here. That's why I'm a little late. I'm actually going in the wrong direction and the wrong, and the wrong line, so you know, got to um, get a full bonus for that, I guess. Um, the uh, setup of this session really is uh, we have way too many slides and I need to go by your questions. So. Uh, when to figure out, uh, well, we've had, uh, um, it would be interesting you know, to have a little poll of uh, how many, uh, well, what's, what's your experience with the uh, uh, firewalls or specifically PF uh, so far? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, on OpenBSD or? On OpenBSD, it's or with mm. five or six. Uh, mm. Yeah, so basically you're, oh, yeah. well, you, you, you know all this already then. Uh, uh, <laughs> there is some tricks that is interesting. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you, sir? Uh, yes, we use it on FreeBSD mm -hmm. uh, quite extensively for the last couple of years. So mm -hmm. Mostly firewall and some uh, traffic shape. Yeah, so the so the new traffic shaping will be well, interesting to you, but not available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so you're, you're active user now. Uh. I have no experience. All right, so uh, that means we'll probably need to do some uh, some of the start slides anyway. Uh, you sir. Mm. And um, I've been a little bit, I've never done anything clever. So. Alright, uh, maybe you'll pick up some tricks then. <laughs> yes, sir? Yeah. Um, I have some help on BSD laptop, so mm. I just found that SSH mm. into the laptop. Mm. Right. Yes, sir? Mm. Alright. Good to hear so many OpenBSD users. Uh, yes, sir? Hmm. So yeah. So right. And, uh, well, this is the guy you've got to blame for all of this, you know. <laughs> you sir. Right. So we'll go for something. Uh, uh, you sir. So let's start at the top here. Uh, just to get a feel of the room, yeah, you s uh, what, what's your experience so far? Uh, um, no, no real experience. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're quite fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I used it on one on one machine just for my own. So, yes, sir. 
Mm. Okay. sounds like uh, we should at least take some of the basic slides and uh, well format of the session is as I said we have too damn many slides so and the other thing to be aware of is I tend to start mumbling for no reason if I do that shout at me please <laughs> because we, we, we do not have what want to uh, you do not want me wandering off into mumbling so please shout at me now um, after this session is complete, uh, you will find the uh, slides online at the NUC site. Uh, actually, the one that works slightly better is if you take the home NUC no slash Peter uh, slash PF uh, newest. That will always be the newest uh, version of the slides. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, uh, at least after, after the session, uh, there will be on there, I, I had anticipated being here like half an hour earlier, but, or a little more than that, but as I said, stepped on the wrong train. So um, um, I'll, I'll put, them, uh, put them up there, uh, hopefully not eating into your lunch break too much. Um, now, okay, I, uh, I messed up the fonts again. Um, this is... Um, this is a ceremony Henning's been through quite a few times before. I wanted to raise the left hand and say, this is my network. It is mine, or technically my employers. It is my responsibility, and I care for it all my heart. There are many other networks out, out there a lot like mine, but none are just like it. And I solemnly swear that I will not mindlessly paste from how-tos. Uh, I received so many questions from people like, a number of the samples in this tutorial and in the book are not actually complete. Like, you would have something, a string it needs, uh, something like that, and I would get questions like, why doesn't this work? And <laughs> it's written like that on purpose, because I... Uh, uh, purpose of the session and purpose of the book is to get, get people uh, get you into the, the mindset of writing rule sets properly. Yes, sir? Oh, yes, sir. So, um, let's get on with it. Well, uh, history of PF, you probably know, already know this. Um, uh, there used to be a, uh, a IP filter that's still retained in Solaris for some reason. Uh, IP filter was the, uh, well, uh, historical pr uh, 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 predecessor of uh, PF. Uh, turned out it wasn't actually Beastie licensed, uh, and uh, Darren Reed, who had written it all, was uh, starting to act up, so we needed a solution. Um, so basically the, the code was removed at one point, and the most secure operating system on the internet was without a firewall for about four weeks, yeah, at least in current. <laughs> and, um, well, uh, and it was a uh, marathon coding uh, uh, that was actually one of the first hackathons, wasn't it? Right. No, the first one was before. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was, together. Together. Mm -hmm. it was actually a miracle. It was because Daniel didn't know about memory layout and he didn't know about MWAPs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's not just work, of course, he got lucky and the packets were actually in the near memory. If that hadn't yeah. worked, he would have stopped. Yeah. <laughs> of course, so. he fixed that before it was committed, but it was a big yeah. coincidence. So, but anyway, um, this incident led to, well, for one thing, we got a new packet filter that's being still actively developed. The other one was that uh, Theo set everybody else off on actually reading, well, auditing the uh, source tree again for whatever license any file was under. And we 
actually turned up uh, a few well, a few instances of, oh, is that code still in use? Oh, of course you can use it under BSD license. And a few problems that needed to be rewritten. Um, yeah. And uh, after that, well, somebody said, uh, uh, set out on the porch tree as well. So uh, basically, we got a lot more um, uh, uh, license, licensing questions clarified, like either it's it is BSD or not, and I think the, the the body of BSD license code actually grew quite a bit after this. So, um, so we're good with that. Um, in, in most cases, it was a question of making the author and asking him to fix his license rate. Yes. Uh, so, um, and well, there were a few. Uh, oh, is this actually in use still? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what <coughs> the first uh, design goals of PF was. Well, basically, we needed a firewall, and we needed one that didn't break people's setup so uh, so much. So, <coughs> as Henning once fam famously said, uh, IPF was written by an RC, so uh, everything was upside down. Uh, <coughs> last last match wins. Uh, that's where that com comes from. Uh, but anyway, um, our early goals were yeah, be fairly compatible, be f full featured, and um, yeah, uh, after 3.1, uh, we, um, well, with 3.1, we could actually filter on every, everything in your S protocols. Uh, AuthPF snuck in then, uh, which is a non-interactive <coughs> non shell for loading, uh, uh, actually lo uh, loads per user, per uh, group uh, rules. Uh, Henning committed, um, uh, old Q traffic shaping uh, in 3.3, uh, which is committed in several several ways. Uh, anchors, which is uh, named several sets, also turn out in 3.3. We got also in 3.3 tables for rel uh, faster uh, IP address lookup uh, instead of lists. Uh, relatively, fast. relatively fast, yes. Uh, that's being hacked on at the moment, isn't it? Uh, for yeah, okay, so, and again, one of my favorite spam D, uh, the um, uh, um, spam deferral demon turned up in 303, th well, if you want to, we'll get back to that at some point. Um, uh, 3 4 turned up uh, packet tagging, which is useful for policy filtering. Um, 3 4 also uh, turned up a few, uh, well, what do you call, network hygiene. Uh, <laughs> scrubbing, <coughs> well, normalization techniques, we'll get to those, uh, back to those. Um, we also have uh, operating system detection, so you can do evil things to Windows machines. Um, the SYN proxy turned out in 3.4 for, well, basically, if your backend's too weak, we can get back to that as well. Um, uh, adaptive state timeouts. Pretty useful for whenever people are trying to flood you to turn up in 3.4. Um, actually, atomic rules that commit, uh, which means you're never in an intermediate state between your old rule set and your new one, that turn up in 3.5. Um, there are still guys out there that are somewhat wishy-washy about that. Um, we got state tracking per source address uh, at one point, which means we uh, can play with a few uh, options. Um, crude load balancing with the uh, round robbing uh, sticky address. And we've got CARP, which is uh, uh, our redundancy solution in 3.5. Uh, we were ab uh, from 3.7, we were able to uh, label routes. Um, and uh, for one turned up, which is actually a uh, pretty much a revolution, multiple routing tables. Uh, with, uh, <coughs> it's a subject that is very rarely touched on in literature. So, uh, yeah, maybe we'll fix that at some point. Um, for one also turned up uh, both pflog and pfsync uh, became clonable, so you can have several of these interfaces for synchronization or logging to different interfaces. Keep state became the uh, default mode from 4.1, which was, well, 
It's just because it makes sense. Uh, you really, in, in most uh, situations, you want stateful fit planning anyway. Relady turned up for better load balancing in 4.2. Um, uh, and it ha does a lot of stuff and it's been recently upgraded to actually be even more PF, uh, PF like in the syntax. Um, one of the, one of my favorites, PFLOW, uh, Netflow export, turned up in 4.5. Uh, and that would turn out to be so useful that we could s actually set um, as a state option. Uh, uh, so setting state defaults um, because PFLOW in 4.5. Uh, we got match rules uh, in 4.6. This is something you're missing in FreeBSD. Uh, FreeBSD's PF is equal, roughly equal to uh, OpenBSD 4.5. So anything beyond this point, sorry, it's not in, open, in FreeBSD yet, and God knows when it will be. Uh, anyway, in 4.6 we got match rules, which well, what you do with a match rule is, well, you match criteria, you can perform actions, other than blocking or passing, uh, which is extremely useful. Uh, all source of uh, some confusion in some rule sets, but uh, we'll get it. Um, uh, we got uh, antidotes for that. Uh, Scrub was rewritten to be, well, make more sense. Um, and in OpenBSD, PF was on by default in 46. It had not been uh, uh, um, not been on by default before that. And then uh, there was the thing that was called for a while, Henning's monster diff, was a diff of 4,000 lines or so? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, they, because the code behind it changed, it made sense to um, uh, make um, the NAT2, RDR2, by NAT2 options basically options on uh, on whatever match or pass rules you have uh, instead of being uh, separate verbs. Um, also, route to will fight in up to and fast route became filtering options in the same way. Uh, and we landed <coughs> routing domain translation, uh, which is, I do not have samples of that in, in this tutorial. Sorry, we'll have to dig up some uh, uh, if we need them. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, but it turned up in 4.7, so, um, uh, anyway, the diverge sockets are s uh, local only, uh, slightly more efi efficient than, uh, uh, than the uh, redirection. And uh, after 4.7, okay, this, this slide grew too much. Uh, <coughs> now, it was quiet for a while. Um, the next big thing, uh, which is, well, the reason why there was a third edition of the old book of PF was the new traffic shaping system, which we, we probably will <coughs> um, uh, turn to. Uh, we saw the first inklings of that in 5.0 with the uh, priority only shaping. Um, uh, FTP proxy, uh, the proxy uh, changed to dirt instead of uh, Redirections. Um, we got NAT64, which is evil. Um, um, and basically, in incremental uh, improvements of 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, we had in 5.5, 5, NUQ. Well, the, um, a new traffic shaping system that's got a saner syntax null Q. Um, and uh, actually in 5.6, uh, alt Q has been removed. So traffic shaping op when open BSD is new Q or no Q. <coughs> so um, we have, well, 5.6 is actually a uh, relatively unexciting release for PF uh, stuff. We, uh, s well, slightly related is that we did some IP version 6. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. So, um, so as for PF's uh, purposes, it's a, you know, it's a stabilization release, really. So, 
here's the uh, uh, where you can find PF today. Of course, an OpenBSD, FreeBSD has this ancient version. NetBSD has roughly the same ancient version. Uh, Dragonfly BSD also inherited the same ancient version. Uh, Apple's uh, Mac OS X, uh, and I think the phone OS also has PF in some form by FreeBSD. They actually did some evil hacks to it that would, be, would have been useful, but are under an incompatible license. Um, and BlackBerry, actually. BlackBerry, uh, some Blackberries run uh, a bastardized form of uh, NetBSD and has PF in it. So, uh, and you will probably find it in locations you well, just poke under the uh, hood and, yeah, well, there's a BSD there, probably as PF as well. So, um, and then again, given the license, you don't actually have to advertise what you're using, so it could turn up a number of uh, places. Now, um, oh, Q QNX, okay, I'll, I'll have to display the slide. Yeah. So um, at one point, anyone here using Linux uh, at the moment for firewalling, IP tables? Yes. Uh, now, this was uh, Jason Dixon on uh, OpenBSD, uh, yeah, on, on the PF mailing list at one point uh, after somebody had stumbled in saying, well, I, I got this real problem converting, converting my stuff from my Linux IP tables to PF. I don't see what's happening. and. Jason turned up with this. Compared to working with IP tables, PF is like this haiku, which it actually isn't. Um, breath of fresh air floating on white rose petals, eating strawberries. Now I'm getting carried away. Hot my couch now. Heading notes, not white fails, fails only for newbie. Tables load my list, target for the asshole spammer, death to his mail store. Carp due to Cisco, redundant, blessed packet, license freed for me. Um, I keep that in there because, well, it's not a haiku, but it's, well, anytime I look at uh, an IP tables setup, yeah, this, this comes back really strongly. Now, what is the, uh, we're talking about here? Well, it's basically, it's a kernel level. We do packet filtering in, in the kernel. Uh, in FreeBSD, it's a separate module, which is loadable. Uh, and we, of course, have the, uh, Basically, the PF control um, admin program that interfaces with the uh, uh, with your setup. Um, and uh, keep in mind that what we're oh sorry, what we're talking about here is uh, oops, this is the first time I use this laptop in the presentation. Sorry. <laughs> um, our world consists of packets, protocols, connections, and ports. Keep that in mind. And um, I actually don't like the term firewall a lot, um, but again, for marketing reasons, we keep uh, using it. Um, well, of course, you can stop undesirable traffic. Uh, I tend to tell people that, uh, s well, stopping is one one property. What your uh, this is a tool for policy enforcement. Whatever your policy is, whatever your traffic, whatever you want to do with your traffic, well, you enforce it using PF. And um, I wonder, should we take the little subsequence here? Uh, one question that always turns up is, uh, can I run PF on Linux? The answer is no. Uh, we've heard, I think there have been five different people turning up on some mailing list saying, well, I've started porting PF to Linux. Never heard from them again. Um, PF is primarily developed as a you know, deeply integrated part of OpenBSD. Uh, remains portable to other BSDs because, well, uh, so a number of the interfaces are uh, are uh, even after what is it, 20 years of this uh, parallel development, we're still fairly well, fairly compatible in some uh, some ways. Uh, anyway, if you want cool new features, you go FreeBSD. If you want, well, if you want FreeBSD, we'll go FreeBSD. Um, 
And uh, for Linuxers out there, um, there are some, well, we don't have systemd. Uh, and we, <laughs> our interfaces are actually, you know, our, our interfaces don't renumber. Uh, so you have t t tips here. Um, uh, even if uh, some versions of, in, in some cases on, on FreeBSD, you actually get the pseudo interface WLAN or so forth, but it, it still has mainly uh, driver name plus sequence number, and those sequence, and sequence numbers don't change unless you actually start uh, moving cards around. Um, most of your configuration goes in our rc.conf for on openbsd rc.conf.local. Uh, on freebsd rc.conf is your own creation and it has uh, defaults elsewhere. And of course the pf.conf, which is this mainly the topic of, of this presentation. Um, there are one other question that turns up way too much is, uh, oh, is there a GUI tool like Muse? Uh, there have been several. Um, several attempts at making those. The other, only one that's survived for more than a year or so is PFSense, which is FreeBSD based and uh, I think it's a, basically a PHP shell on top of uh, a lot of other stuff. And well, it's people use it. Some people love it. Uh, I've been I've been doing some mud wrestling with it uh, when I had to. Uh, I still. I still prefer my favorite editor and my pf.conf, so I will not be touching on, uh, <coughs> on these things. Um, now, the automatic conversion. There are, there are tools that claim to uh, do automatic conversion. Some of, the, uh, some of them are in the previous reports tree, at least. Uh, I've seen results, and they look horrible. It's possible that they actually work. I would not vouch for them. And anyway, in uh, uh, almost any setting, uh, if you're going from, say, a Cisco firewall or a Linux firewall, whatever, please, for your own sanity, go back to specification. Write your specification and implement that as your pf.conf. Uh, it will, yeah, you'll, you'll be really happy you did those steps uh, in the future. Um, and uh, probably your old PA, uh, your, your old IP tables setup has a lot of junk in it. They don't need it anymore. So, um, and for the next one, um, well, there are good sources of, um, um, of information elsewhere. Uh, <coughs> as I was flashing to you, you know, you can go and buy the buy the book. Now 40% off. <laughs> uh, I would, <coughs> yeah, I was hoping to have uh, physical co uh, copies, but um, this should this should apply to um, uh, the uh, paper and ebook versions. And if you buy the paper version, you will get the ebook e e straight away. If you buy it from uh, from no starch. So um, now let's get back to our normal. Oops. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Um, that was not was. So now, uh, please again. If I wonder uh, if this gets boring or you have a question, please just yell. Um, on OpenBSD, it's on. You can check whether it's on or not by doing something like this. Uh, or, anyway, let's have a look at what, a, what an OpenBSD system looks like. Uh, and you can see it's already already enabled, which you would expect on, on an OpenBSD. I can try to do that.
Yeah, that was, that was a lot better. <laughs> um, and I guess we didn't actually have a network here, did we? Now I got a network. Excellent. Um, now, meet my own machine. Um, we'll get back to that fun later. <coughs> so, um, anyway, on the uh, an open PC is already on, and you will be able to tell that it actually is on by running basically any uh, uh, PF control minus E is enable uh, F for whatever file uh, uh, you want to read from, and uh, that's basically it. On FreeBSD, FreeBSD unfortunately does not come with the default PF, uh, PF rule set. So, um, you can uh, turn it on by say something like, uh, yeah, well, PF control minus E, uh, but then it will be default to open. Uh, you probably want before you, at least before you reboot, you want to enable uh, these settings. Uh, and I see my font is not large enough here. Uh, PF enable, yes, and PF log enable because you probably want some logging as well. Um, and uh, you will need to um, create a, a pf.conf. You can well, create a zero by pf.conf with touch if you like, uh, because you, if you don't have one, uh, your P, uh, srcd pf start will actually fail because there is no pf.conf. Um, so, um, and any NetBC users here? I don't think so. Or am I going to? F no. Good. Uh, anyway, they're, they keep going on about the NPF anyway. So um, now, simplest rule set, which is fairly close to the default anyway, is pass. Yes. Yes, well, but anything passes. The good thing about this is that, well, actually, this expands to uh, now. Uh, Now, if we say, what it expands to is what it expands to is pass all and flags. Basically, uh, oh, my window is too big again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll fix that. And then you see all the wonderful. Uh, Anyway, with the uh, that rule set, you have actually expands to pass all and this flag set. So uh, anything that uh, does not have the proper flag set uh, will will be discarded uh, and will. Uh, new connections will, will create state. Um, now, 
I used to say that the simplest secure rule set is this one. Uh, I just add one byte block and none shall pass. And well, oh, you're secure. You can go now. Um, and um, actually, I got them here. Yeah, we can actually. Uh, Uh, and just for a uh, hell of it. Lock, well, drop all. Dr uh. I still need to do something about that. The window size. Uh, the thing is, my display, my local display is, uh, as you can probably tell already, shows a lot more than you see on that little screen. So, uh, sorry about that. I hope it doesn't eat into your lunch time too much. there. Yeah. Block drop all is what you, what you get. Uh, I think, uh, do we need the font to be that big? Could we possibly go back to something like 16? This is still readable. So now, uh, important. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, earliest PF was written by an LC, so everything was upside down. Um, um, rule evaluation is. Um, Top to bottom, last matching rule wins. So, uh, the same uh, same version of the uh, rule set is you you go from the uh, largest, uh, the the most restrictive, which is block, and then you pass whatever you want to pass. Now, um, if you uh, uh, if you go the Linux way and do a catch-all at the end, well, that's the catch-all you get. So. In, the, in this case, you would you would get uh, for first version here. You you will actually get traffic from from that uh, network passed. And this uh, uh, the other one uh, reverse it, and you actually end up blocking everything because while well, anything that matches passed from one nine two one six eight one zero three slash twenty four uh, will also match the block all. Uh, when a lot of people have actually uh, have actually messed up that fairly early on. Um, if you have more than two rules, uh, you will appreciate at some at some point that you can actually stop processing with a quick uh, anything that matches this pass quick rule or for that matter block quick uh, for, for that uh, connection the processing stops with the, with a the, with the quick rule. So, uh, in, in this case here, you would have uh, a pass quick rule, uh, uh, TCP port SSH to a specific address, and anything else that tries to access uh, SSH, the SSH port will just not pass. Um, there, uh, uh, 
be a little cautious about uh, about uh, quick rules because, well, they sometimes they mess up your logic. Um, now, of course, well, from 4.1 onwards, we're stateful by default. So, uh, as you would, uh, as you probably saw in the uh, in, the, in the loads uh, already. Um, we get uh, keep state and so forth. Um, one of the one of the reasons is that one of the reasons we we do this is uh, anything that matches an existing state will pass without the rule set lookup. Uh, the state table is a fairly uh, efficient uh, data structure. Uh, only if a, a packet does not match the state, we'll go for um, uh, rule set lookup, which is well, slightly more expensive. Uh, but then again, uh, any any valid uh, 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 connection setup will create a state, and uh, it's well, basically it's a sensible default. If you really really want to be stateless, you can use no state. I don't think I've done that ever, but <laughs> but you can. Now. Um, yeah, even after uh, this fairly short uh, introduction, there will be, within the six weeks of attending this tutorial, you will at some point implement rules that change the lux out of your system. I guarantee it. And you will insufficiently test the rules that change and boot with an invalid configuration, meaning that you're all open. Now, if this does not happen, please drop me a line by email because I like to keep tally of people who actually manage to not do these things within six weeks of my tutorial. <coughs> this is not a joke. <laughs> Please do. Um, now, to keep you sane, Russ, oh, PF, in addition to sane uh, rule sets, uh, Syntax. It also has a few features that are specifically uh, designed to keep your sanity. One of them is macros. You can name something, say your network of clients here, it stays in your num um, in, uh, in that uh, network here, and you can refer to those named. Uh, macros later in your rule set. So you got your clients and you block everything, but you pass from your clients. Now we can try and see what that looks like in Yeah, that's our rule set. And in, if we try to load that instead. You see, the, um, the macro is expanded in place. And uh, macros. Well, you can have uh, macros can also be, for example, port ranges. So this one has, well, this is the typical port range for, for back, uh, the, uh, the enterprise backup uh, solution. Um, which again expands to uh, and here, here we have, uh, since we have port range and not individual ports, it's, uh, uh, this, this expands to just one rule uh, with, the, with the macro here. Um, in a slightly more involved example, we have our, uh, our lists of, uh, uh, of services. The, uh, these names are the same ones from uh, your at services file. Are actually, they're maintained separately, aren't they? And the uh, the names the names are uh, uh, taken directly from services or maintained separately. I forget. But 
anyway, you, you will find them in, 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 in services. And uh, anyway, so this, uh, this rule set will expand to, this is when I will regret uh, having the, the big font here. Uh, what you see here is that for each, for each of these um, uh, members of the list, we get a new expands to uh, one rule per uh, per protocol here. So, or or per uh, per list member. Um, well, this is what what actually gets loaded into your uh, uh, into your configuration. Um, now, of course, if you've been playing around with uh, something like this last rule set, well. You really need to test. Uh, you always need to test whenever you, you make a, a change. And well, basic things like well, does name resolution still work? Should it work? Well, if you're if you're if you're set up to not allow port uh, port uh, domain, well, great, doesn't work. Uh, this example should work. Uh, you probably want to SSH to somewhere else. Well, with the rule set we just presented, you could. Um, and okay, this slide is outdated because we don't we don't have links in base anymore, do we? No. Uh, it used to be that we had links in base, so we could just uh, fire up links, and we had OpenBSD org uh, website uh, load. It's not there anymore, but you, know, you should be able to tell that to port eighty or something. Check check that it actually works, or have a have a client in your network do something. Um, and uh, anyway, with the rule set we had uh, right before here, all these should work. And um, uh, connections from anywhere else to your network should not work, except for in our previous rule set here, we had this magical host called backup server. Um, and that should work. Um, And yeah, well, we have uh, basically a vari variation on the uh, on the same here, uh, where we block and pass for some some TCP and, and UDP services. And uh, yeah, well, anyway, we want to load your rule set. This is the uh, just reload your rule set. Uh, this is the uh, way to do it, uh, or you can do uh, go the the way I've been doing uh, with the these. Uh, literal says here, uh, verbosely not load, but from the file something, and you get the listing of what's actually loaded, which is uh, my recommendation for uh, uh, actually getting to know what, what, you're, you're, what you're playing with. Uh, and I think I just messed up my sequence of uh, slides here because, uh, yeah, well, the, anyway, you make make a change to your rule set, and uh, unless you've rebooted, you probably have the the answer for a last uh, name resolution cached anyway. So try looking up, say, netbeastie.org, or uh, well, if you're really testing and you don't know, uh, if you really want to test whether name resolution works, try looking up the website of the party you wouldn't uh, consider voting for because that's probably not in your cache. Um, Again, go through your, your, uh, your rule set, and uh, the important thing is, well, okay, stuff that should work, please test that. Stuff that should break, please make sure they break, because it's really easy to open doors that shouldn't be open. So please, um, please uh, can I, uh, um, test stuff that should not work. Um, if you've been running for a little while, you probably have something like this, um, well, PF control minus S, statistics and info for, well, general information. The actual display is a bit longer. And uh, this is from quite a while back uh, when my home gateway did not yet have uh, IP version 6 connectivity. Uh, but still, there were a few bytes passed on IP version 6. Well, these are um, uh, neighbor 
uh, labor solicitations go out before, actually before the rule set is properly loaded. So it's passed, uh, but then uh, three packs were passed and the rest were blocked uh, in, in this case. Um, some, some details have changed since then, so probably on a modern network, modern OpenBC, they would all be, uh, would all be blocked. Uh, or you would probably, if, if you don't have IP version 6 configured, you probably won't be doing any of this stuff anyway. Yes. So, but anyway, uh, before we did that change, we, we had this little, little, um, uh, little stream of uh, IP version 6 packets going up anyway because, well, neighbor solicitation. Um, now, Stuff you don't have in FreeBSD, part one, match. Um, match turn up in for OpenBSD 4.6, and um, uh, I remember quite a few discussions uh, on whether that this would be useful because you can do all everything with block or uh, pass anyway, uh, except while well, your logic sometimes requires that you just match and you do stuff like uh, apply that, uh, or redirect, or maybe you do some tagging and match on the tag later. And there are a number of things you can do uh, with match. I do, well, sorry, OpenBC has it, FreeBSD does not. Um, and I, I have a set example file for this as well. Well, we'll just look, let's look at that. I for, I'd actually forgotten about that one. Um, and it looks like, yeah, whatever. Um, and this, this baby actually introduces a feature we haven't talked about yet, tables. Uh, it has a table that's in, initialized to these networks, except that one. And let's see what happens when we when try to load. Oops. Yes, well, basically the only match rule that was applied here was the, uh, uh, the NAT2. And for some reason, round robin. Uh, that probably means there, there's more than one address on the uh, on the external interface, but yeah, well, uh, that'll turn up in, in practice anyway. Um, another useful tip uh, is uh, if there are interfaces where you really don't want to do filtering, you can add a little performance to your uh, processing by just saying skip this interface set skip on and in this case low which is the um, uh, loopback uh, interface group uh, you can set it on uh, uh, you can do set on interface groups or specific interfaces uh, anyway it will just mean that well no filtering will happen on that interface and it's uh, um, so basically, no, uh, no filtering and no processing, which helps, possibly helps performance and possibly helps your, your real cell logic a bit. Um, now, so far we've been see, uh, setting up well, uh, for a single, uh, single machine. Uh, and um, <coughs> this used to be, oh, the reason for this slide it was a lot of, uh, questions and actually pretty much flame wars on uh, why doesn't my rule set work, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, sorry, thing is, um, on a single machine, it's fairly, so single, single machine with single uh, network interface, well, in is anything that comes from somewhere else, of course, out is from me to the internet. Now, on a gateway, you have at least two interfaces, and um, in, well, it's still, you, you need to, 
what, what, what a lot of people fail to, uh, to understand was in means into the gateway. Uh, it doesn't matter if you yourself are sitting on a host in a network behind that gateway and you're saying in. Let's, your internal, well, in is the direction, uh, in or out is, uh, are directions relative to your gateway, not what, whatever you consider internal or external. Now, so that's the reason for this slide. Uh, in the gateway, you get in from one or, one or several uh, of several networks out from me to one of uh, several networks, and you actually have the situation where uh, traffic will pass through you. Uh, so, yeah, well, there's always a network behind you. Now, concrete example, uh, and this is, now this is, this is too tiny, isn't it? Now, a lot of people would uh, end up writing something like the first rule here, pass in INET uh, for uh, IP version 4, proto TCP on a specific interface from the directly attached network for that interface to network directly attached to some other interface for some ports and keep state. Yeah, well, that should work. But what does that rule actually do? Well, it does, does what you say, which is anything in the port, in the address range that for the directly attached network, uh, traffic matching those ports will pass to addresses in the other directly attached network. Problem is, problem is that you're getting very specific here because you're passing on that interface. You're only uh, mentioning that interface. Now, anything that's actually connected to that interface uh, in, in that network, well, it sort of doesn't get there because this, this filter is only on that interface. Now, uh, as, of course, in, if, if you have a if you have a default to block, if you have a default to pass, you know, this won't uh, matter at all. Um, your next uh, rule here would do the mirror image of uh, that one. We would actually let uh, on the other interface any uh, you see the the filtering uh, uh, the the actual um, fil um, filtering uh, logic here is the same, but is on the on the other interface. In uh, quite a few contexts, you could probably keep your sanity by just saying, well, if you want to pass anything from that network to uh, the other one or to anywhere, you just uh, roll into one rule saying, well, my network here to anywhere, uh, uh, these, uh, these ports, and yeah, keep state. Keep state is actually redundant at, uh, at the moment, but um, and has been for several years. Um, but um, there is a pitfall in being too specific and uh, uh, tying yourself to a specific interface. Uh, certainly Linux people do that <laughs> in, in, their, in their first attempts. Um, and then again, uh, you can use your readability uh, features, uh, macros. Um, the interface colon network is a uh, fairly useful, uh, uh, fairly useful shorthand for uh, for a specific network. Um, you could do something like uh, make a macro call uh, local nets, is whatever your inter internal interface is, uh, whatever, uh, and colon network for your local, for the directed attached network. Um, basically, you could put, put anything in there. Yes? Uh, if we have uh, many networks on this interface, then we include all or many IP addresses from different networks? Uh, yes, it would be uh, actually, yeah, 
uh, any, uh, the coal network is any, any directly connected network. So uh, um, if your setup is messy enough, yes, that would be. <laughs> so, uh, but then again, you can. Uh, anyway, you, for for your macro, uh, you can be as specific as you like, really. Uh, um, if you want to, if you need to differentiate, you would just specify different different lists, or maybe maybe even a table for uh, for, for filtering purposes. Um, and uh, anyway, reiterating, uh, whenever you have a a macro, you can use it in your uh, in your f filtering uh, uh, in your fil filtering criteria. So you have something like pass on it proto TCP from local network, whatever that is, to whatever ports keep state. And um, yeah, well, uh, for your own sanity, you make things as simple for yourself as possible. But there is such a thing as too simple. <laughs> so. Um, Anyway, well, you're setting up a gateway. Um, this is a lot of a lot of people forget this. You actually need to. Gatewaying is not on by default in any of the BSDs. You actually need to enable it. And um, uh, I'm just saying, a lot of people do not remember to do this, and um, well, hilarity ensues on OpenBSD misc and so forth. <laughs> um, Unless somebody helpful just as steps up and well, what what is this controls like? Um, FreeBSD tends to um, use the rc.conf variables, uh, to enable, but uh, under the hood is actually the same syscontrol sys commands that will be executed. Um, and again, yeah, well, on, on OpenBSD and I believe that BSD, you just edit your sysctl.conf. FreeBSD, you uh, do your thing in rc.conf anyway. Um, now, I need to make those slides smaller. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, we've been, uh, OpenBSD has had IP version 6 for a long time, even if some of the developers actually hate this thing. Um, um, it used to be, of course, uh, well, um, early versions of this class that would be uh, would encounter people who would be um, would actually not know what NAT was, but they would talk about internal and external addresses. So the slide came came from this. Well, we had back in the day when I was a young man. You know, computers were room sized and had lots of users, and there were People who put together networks and they would say, well, four billion addresses is enough for anybody. Turns out it isn't. Like, we have stuff like this one, and I believe I, most of the time I carry at least four devices anyway. Most of them <laughs> would need an IP address. So, well, four billion, oh, that's fewer than the number of people, even, even when the IP version four was, uh, was created. Uh, so, of course, we needed more addresses, and we went to 128-bit instead of 32-bit addresses. And uh, we were supposed to have been IP version 6 only for 20 years now, by now, by the, only, by the original um, uh, plans. But yeah, well, it didn't quite happen. So the, we needed a stopgap uh, solution, which is where all the 192.168 so dot something that something addresses come from because well, chunk off a rot non routable addresses. Look, uh, uh, look up your RFC 1918 and you will have your NAT addresses. Um, one problem, well, the um, IP version six is supposed to be seamlessly compatible, or, or at least you can have dual stack fairly easily. Um, there are issues, but if we support. So, uh, and again, I don't know, how many of you here are have IP version 6 natively? Lucky you. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I tunnel from uh, 
But then again, in, uh, um, the way we differentiate by the, uh, the well, legacy IP version 4 uh, versus uh, the future, uh, protocol of the future I, uh, I internet, um, IP version 6 is fairly simple. INET denotes IP version 4 traffic. INET 6, IP version 6. So, and you can, as the slide here says, you can have totally different, different sets of, um, uh, of rules for your uh, IP version 6 and IP version 4 uh, traffic. You do not have, have to have a separate configuration or a separate, uh, uh, separate program for it as you do on Linux. It's all in there, but you can differentiate um, as, as detailed as you like. Um, and it's worth noting that we're on dual stack systems. If you do not specify whether it's INET or INET 6, your filtering rule will match both ad, uh, uh, address families. And uh, yeah, as it says in the slide here, we have uh, NAT64, uh, IP version 6 to uh, IP version 4 uh, address translation. Uh, it's fairly ugly and we'll get into it if we need to. Um, this is again an ancient slide what my gateway looked like a long while back. Yours will be slightly somewhat uh, different or somewhat similar. Um, now, a simple pf.conf for a gateway with that. You define your macros for your, what, you, uh, what is your world facing interface, external interface, internal interface. And the clue here really is you match outgoing traffic on your external interface, not to whatever the address is. All the braces here, the parenthesis here is an attempt to um, uh, compensate for dynamically allocated addresses. Uh, so basically, it will, it will look up the whatever the address of your uh, of that interface is. Um, if you're if you have an evil ISP that you know, changes your IP address, uh, the filtering will still work. Uh, and then again, your basic block all, and then pass whatever you want to pass. And this is essentially a pass all anyway from from your clients. Um, again, uh, just to uh, uh, just to uh, uh, repeat again, uh, goodies you can't have in open, in FreeBSD match rules. You would do something. You could do anything with match rules. No, just, not just that. You could do something like tag on incoming, and uh, apply that. Use that tag uh, for filtering later in your rule sets. One thing to note, though, is that match rules, the action is applied immediately. If you have several match rules and a packet matches several match rules, the last one will, uh, well, all the actions will be applied. So <laughs> this could lead to interesting uh, situations. Um, can you have, can you have several tags? Uh, well, tags. tags will be overwritten. <laughs> yes, um, but then again, um, uh, yeah, there have been some some interesting discussions about that as well, but there, there's only a place for one tag, so. The only change, yeah, I uh, think I've heard that already. So, um, yeah, so basically you can you can tag a number of things, but you know, there's always la last match, last match wins in, in this in, uh, this context. Now. For FreeBSD and others, uh, this is the we still had NAT as a separate verb. It doesn't really look that different. Um, and again, um, more reiterating really on the, the list of services we had in the earlier um, um, earlier sample here. And again, here we have the uh, also a quick rule so. Rule of evaluation, 
always from top to bottom. Here we block it first, so only the stuff we explicitly say will pass passes. And of course, we really want these UDP services, whatever they are, at least our name service and MTP. We want these to pass, so we have a quick rule here. And um, as it says in the slide, quick means you exit rule evaluation and basically a matching quick rule is the one that always wins. And uh, well, a useful way to break the logic of your uh, rule set otherwise. Um, so again, this is the last time I will uh, talk about, well, you really need to test. Well, <coughs> will this previous rule set well, match it to the previous rule set that yes, we have um, uh, name service lookups, they should work, um, you should be able to SSH out, and uh, yeah, a few other services should work. Again, test, test again, test stuff that should work, but please also test stuff that should not work and make sure it doesn't. Your boss will thank you a lot. Um, now, frequent question is, can I put host names, domain names, just not, not just IP addresses in my pf.com? Uh, yes, but uh, you need to make sure those uh, names resolve when your rule set is loaded. Um, and <coughs> there are the... Um, uh, because, well, uh, if, if the name does not resolve when your rule set is loaded, the, the rule set is not loaded because it's not valid. And you're back to the tassel situation, which you probably don't want. Unless, of course, you're a open beastie, where there's a default rule set that's loaded uh, in, uh, in place anyway, which is for you to log in and, and fix your screw-ups. Um, and again, what it, my recommendation is, well, you can do a lot of hacks, like make sure you uh, get name service and then load your, your real rule set after certain checks, but stuff you really want to, um, uh, if you, well, if you're diehard enough, well, just put it in your ads hosts file, you know. Uh, if the, the name, if many addresses mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have several addresses, the, well, the first... And the clients resolve other addresses and you don't match them. Yeah, you will have that problem, yes. <laughs> <coughs> so, much desired future, but you, well, so it's, it's doable, but not necessarily um, uh, recommended. So. Now, uh, how many of you guys need to use FTP? You want to kill it, yes, and for the reasons that is probably the reasons it says here in the slide. And I'm surprised that not, uh, uh, not more people here actually need to use FTP because we we'll suffer, well, so, uh, so many resources are available only by FTP. That's not true. Really? There's SSL FTP. There is yeah. SSL, yes. FTP. Yeah. Yes. You have to be yes, yes, uh, which is uh, runs on a different port and they slide differently. Um, anyway, we have the point up here. Point here is that yeah, um, FTP is of course an old protocol. It's it predates TCP/IP. And I stopped count. Well, when I, when I was doing the book, I thought I'd just count the number of RFCs involved in the FTP protocol. When I had fifty, I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so there's more than 50 uh, RFCs involved, <coughs> and it's, it predates TCP IP. Um, uh, but again, we have the FTP proxy, uh, which is actually it gives us <coughs> a first taste of um, two features. One is um, uh, one is divert, 
uh, the, the divert sockets. We uh, have the, the pass rule that diverts to the local address on the specific port. Um, the other one is that you need to declare an anchor. An anchor is a uh, named sub rule set, uh, basically for stuff like the FTP proxy or other applications to dynamically insert their rules in a rule set for, uh, well, maybe even very short-lived rules it's to, to match whatever uh, the, the application needs. Uh, as, a, as a useful interface, uh, you, can, you can use that from even for, uh, with the FTP. Uh, you, can, you can populate um, anchors from the command line with, the, with PF control if you like. I have a sample of that, but uh, the more common use is yeah, you have an application like the FTP proxy uh, that will, uh, or there are a few others, that will insert their own rules in a named rule set of um, uh, the, the name anchor um, and, and delete them when they're no, no longer needed. Um, so <coughs> basically on the... Um, um, yes, uh, pre nobody uses uh, an, uh, an open beast of that old, so that, should, that should probably die in this slide, but anyway, the modern version, you enable the FTP proxy, you put in the anchor, and you put in your, your uh, divert true, and uh, your users, poor souls, can use their FTP as they like. Uh, you will try to dissuade them, but um, here's the free beast version. Um, we actually need two anchors, one for the NAT and one for the redirection. Um, because uh, in most cases, the proxy will need to insert both, both kinds of rules. Um, and again, it's a, uh, a very small number of rules added to a rule set, and you have a, your FTP. Uh, you shouldn't be doing this. Now, <coughs> one of the more useful uh, uh, features we hinted at, uh, tables. Tables um, uh, are basically a little more efficient than if you have a, um, you, you could make a list, a macro list of individual IP addresses. The thing is that will, uh, when you have a, uh, uh, list list items. <coughs> each uh, each list item will generate a new rule. <laughs> so uh, tables were invented to be st uh, storage for IP addresses. Uh, you can even have address ranges uh, like or network addresses like this, and uh, you can have a few operators operating on these addresses. This this here negates that one. So you have the network except this particular address, and you refer to the the address. <coughs> uh, sorry, the the, uh, the table as one item in in a in a rule. So it became, it's a fairly uh, fairly flexible tool for uh, maintaining uh, li uh, lists of uh, of addresses. And PF control lets you uh, manipulate. Uh, addresses from um, from the command line. And you can load from a file, for example. Oh, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> so it's, so it's uh, a fairly uh, fairly useful uh, thing, thing to have for uh, for several types of operations. Um, we probably will get back to at least one use of those later. Um, Now, it's local time, 10.30. Um, I think I'll, I'll need about a five-minute break. Anybody else okay with that? Uh, is there a coffee source near? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, I'll, yeah, five-minute break for coffee then. <laughs>